All right, start recording. Okay. So we are starting now. The PR, do you want to share your screen? Okay, sure. All right, so thank you everyone. Uh, welcome to the accounting design project. Uh, please mute yourself and also share your video if possible so that we can see each other. Uh, I'm Lin Xiu from Purdue University. Uh, and today we are very happy to have Pierre Liang from Carnegie Mellon University uh, to share with us this very interesting paper, uh, Revisiting Accounting Entropy. Uh, and uh, the workshop is one hour. And uh, whenever you have questions, please just unmute yourself and ask a question. Please try to not use the chat box because we, we don't necessarily see your question uh, first time. And so, um, Pierre, the floor is yours. If you need any help from me, uh, just let me know. OK. Um, thank you. I, can, I hope you can uh, hear me well. Uh, thanks, Lynn, uh, for introduction and for moderating this um, event. I've always had good memories coming uh, coming here. Unfortunately, I was not able to uh, come this this uh, season as I was teaching, um, heavy teaching. But I'm very happy to be here uh, to share our new work. Uh, um, my co-authors uh, are Nan, I hope it uh, will be on the call, and uh, of Minnesota and uh, Gao Qing, um, uh, who's uh, on leave from Minnesota and visiting uh, CMU this year. And we apologize uh, for our incomplete uh, draft uh, that's uh, last minute, but I hope uh, I, I will provide you with an entertaining um, presentation to make up for our poor writing. And now I said this is new work, but actually it's, um, it's work using some really old ideas of entropy that's invented in the 1940s by uh, Klaus Shannon of Bell Labs um, and pioneered in accounting uh, uh, way back in the 60s um, and, and 70s by, um, by the likes of Henry, uh, Henri Thiel and uh, Baruch Lab. Uh, so that's why uh, the title is Revisiting, uh, Revisiting Accounting Entropy. And we're not responsible for coming up with this idea uh, for the first time. But in some ways, um, I think this paper is also a tribute uh, to our heroes among uh, the scholars in the past and so I've been thinking a lot about the uh, history of accounting thoughts lately and teaching the subject. Uh, so, uh, so you will be hearing uh, some hero worshiping uh, from me uh, in this presentation. Now, in some other ways, the, the paper is also a, a, about a dare, uh, which means uh, that we are daring uh, to move away from uh, our classic trainings uh, in classical information economics um, that's originated from the Coast Commission uh, um, uh, think of uh, Jacob Marshak and his friends, and open our inquiry into um, information theory uh, that's originated uh, by Klaus Shannon of, of Bell Labs uh, way back when. Um, so the presentation, uh, so let me go to the next slide. Um, so here's the outline. Um, uh, I'll start with some introduction, um, and this you'll hear uh, some history, uh, some uh, hero worshiping. Um, and then I'll move to information theory. Uh, so you will hear the uh, concept of entropy uh, uh, will make an appearance here. Um, the accounting entropy is our attempt to um, uh, modernize the uh, uh, application of this idea to accounting data, accounting numbers. And we'll do um, in, the, in the empirical and data and results section, we'll do what we call a proof of concept application of this idea. Uh, and show you some uh, preliminary empirical results. Um, so let me let's let's get started. Uh, again, feel free to interrupt me. Uh, uh, that's a lot more fun that way. Um, so so our um, motivating example uh, is going to be um, SBB Silicon Valley Bank's um, balance sheet uh, for the interesting three year period that they had. Um, so if you if you, if you look at their total asset, it's double, uh, almost doubled in one year and then stay flat. And then the much discussed health maturity security just uh, uh, exploded. But if you look at the um, common size 
balance sheet for the same period, um, you notice that, of course, the total asset exploded. But then during these uh, two years, we see the proportion of uh, the total asset of three three asset like items just change dramatically: uh, cash available for sale, uh, um, held to maturity. So the motivating question or the problem definition um, is assuming what, what we are saying, and this is how we teach our students, these things contain information, um, how to quantify the information that's contained in the common sized balance sheet. So it's very just simple, naive question. How can we quantify it in some way? Now, we are classically trained. So one way that we were trained to do uh, is to follow uh, information economics uh, uh, approach to answer this question. So this is a uh, splendid information economic based accounting research that's pioneered by uh, the folks like Joe Dembski in starting in the 60s and 70s. So first we need to specify a decision maker under uncertainty. So we need a state, action, an outcome, some technology defined on it. And then we need to endow the decision maker some expected utility function. Uh, or at least a utility function, and then um, the decision maker uh, follows the expected utility when making decision of the uncertainty. And then we need to specify a probability over the state space. Uh, and then we can visualize balance sheet is simply transforming uh, uh, into some, something called a partition of the state space, because that's how we model information. But then uh, Joe always reminded us to add in competing information sources like income statement or non-financial statement sources, right? And then uh, other uh, decision makers. So it can, may not be a single person decision maker. Uh, and then we have uh, at the end, a complex multi-person game theoretic decision uh, making structure uh, like timing. We need to specify who moves first or higher order knowledge, uh, what we don't know and what we know, uh, what other people know and such. So this is just splendid. Um, now, uh, I said this is a dare, um, so uh, because we are we're not doing that. Um, so we are um, we dare to depart from this, and we propose to answer the question, um, focusing on what we call uh, information production problem or the quantification to answer the quantification problem by focusing on how information is produced. Um, so we. We think of the information production, so how balance sheet is uh, created from some firm activity uh, that's ingested into some information system like double entry bookkeeping and other rules. And that generates internal records like uh, journals and ledgers and other documents. And that transform into some kind of um, output that we, we saw in Silicon Valley bank case, like a financial statements. And then decisions are made later. Um, so what we are focusing on is going to be the middle three part, how information is produced, and we want to quantify it this way. Um, I think I have a question from Brett. Yes, hi, Pierre. Hi, uh, good to see I, you. You know, I just want to, I'm old enough to remember some of this the first time around. Okay, one of the problems Dembski had, and it's in his paper, I forgot what it's called, that basically when you have multiple decision makers, there is no answer, mm -hmm. you know, so, I think that there is a tremendous, I think that this is a big problem in the sense that we do not have any set of reasonable axioms when we have multiple decision makers as opposed to a single decision maker. Yeah, I, I totally agree. In his 73 paper, he raised the general impossibility of such a quantification uh, exercise, which means uh, in within the information uh, 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 classic information paradigm, the answer to our question um, is generally a no, that there's no way you can quantify. And that's why we said we take this dare to leave the information framework and, and enter uh, uh, Klaus Shannon's uh, information theory framework and try to answer it this way. However, that is couch in a single person. I mean, there is no person there. I mean, it's just neutral, right? I mean, it's just information for yes. a person. Yes, yes. So so that's why I'm, I'm trying to say, what we'll be focusing on is how information is produced from the basically the three middle block here, information system that takes in some, some outside in, uh, input and generate internal records and produce financial statement. We want to quantify information within this, uh, uh, this narrow uh, band of, of the uh, of of the process. So okay, that's, sorry. 
But that's why this is a dare. This is a dare because this is the dare. We say we don't want to specify whom because we know uh, when we go there. When we go there, Joe Dembski's uh, impossibility theorem will apply. Basically, it's futile. Um, yeah, I'm sorry. That's all I was trying to get at. That the measure might be completely different for different people. So yes. why are you trying to find a single measure? That was my question. Um, well. Uh, that's why this is uh, this is the this is the experiment. We 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 want to we want to uh, quantify a uh, we want to generate a general measure which we know uh, if we bring in any user, it's a futile exercise. Um, uh, so that's that. So so we just want to answer the original question: How can we quantify uh, the uh, the the common size information? So how much information is contained in there? Um, uh, it, it, exactly. So, so, so we, sorry, uh, we, we want to uh, explicitly answer the question without mentioning users and see where we go. That's why it's it's kind of a it's an old question. Yeah. So if you just give me a benefit of the doubt for a little bit, and then we'll we'll we'll, we'll see where this goes. How about that? All right. So again, uh, we are focusing on the how information is produced. Um, now, the way I want to visualize this is to make um, is a theoretically appeal to Professor Ijiri um, in his seventy-five theory text it, uh, that he brought up three axioms: control, quantity, and exchange. So the, here is this quickest summary I could think of. Professor Ijiri says that accounting numbers are outcome of an accounting measurement process that classify of classifying and quantifying economic resources controlled by the entity resulting from recognized um, uh, exchange between resources. So quantifying economic resource that's based on exchange, um, that give, that's kind of balance sheet, right? So the, 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 this is our kind of theoretical um, uh, 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 appeal. Now, operationally, um, what, we want to, what we want to make this uh, uh, more explicit it's actually how we teach accounting in our uh, uh, undergraduate class. We, we, we visualize a firm uh, in an environment that's very foggy, that's a lot of things going on. So what do we do? We make up some rules like uh, double entry bookkeeping and ingest these uh, transactions or um, environmental changes and activities and, and, and convert them into journal entries. Um, Debits and credits, and we move. And then we journal. Uh, we we, uh, we 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 post them uh, to ledgers, uh, and then uh, we prepare trial balances when financial statement is called for, uh, and then aggregate into financial statements. Uh, but I, the way I want to think about this is actually this is this is coding. Uh, we code. Uh, we code activities into. Uh, uh, data or into uh, accounting codes uh, that transmit uh, uh, some message. So the analogy I want to think of, this is like, uh, 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 just like uh, data scientists or, or coders, uh, we take uh, uh, backgrounds or some message uh, or with the information we want to convert them into messages and send them to some someone. So the first process of from environment to journals that these are lossy encoding because we destroy some information. We don't keep a record of everything. When we post, it's mostly lossless encoding uh, because we're simply transform we're, we're transforming the journals onto uh, ledgers. Um, but from ledgers to uh, trial balance, it's going to be lossy encoding as well because we also leave some information behind. And then from trial balance to financial statement is from financial statement line item, that's also lossy encoding. Um, now, uh, we use tools, so we use alphabets to code uh, in, in when we do our uh, computer coding, but here uh, we are also using tools like a chart of accounts, uh, double entry bookkeeping rules. Those are the tools that we use to do the encoding, right? Um, so if you visualize uh, financial statements as simply a coding exercise, it's simply transforming information, transmitting information in some efficient or less efficient ways, depending how you do things. And so that's why in terms of operation, operational uh, 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 tools, we're going to look for, um, we're going to look for um, 
the uh, 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 kind of a computer uh, uh, computer science kind of counterpart to interpreting our of our effort. So if you do this for two years, for example, so the the blue is one year, and then we do it again in the green year. Um, so we'll uh, uh, in the next year, new transactions will take place, journals and all the way to trial balance ledgers to trial balance to financial statements. From an outsider perspective, we won't see uh, the journals and the trial balance. We only see uh, balance sheets. And so we see two balance sheets, like it, what we saw in uh, uh, Silicon Valley Bank. Um, so we ask simply ask the question, what is the new information here? Right. Uh, so the answer, uh, we hope, uh, inspired from the bookkeeping as coding, uh, as in coding exercise, it's going to be from uh, the answer come from uh, Klaus Shannon's uh, work, uh, information theory. Because if visualized this way, we can think of balance sheet as simply an information channel in the sense of Klaus Shannon, uh, through which some message, which is codes, uh, that are transmitted about economic resources of the entity. And so we're going to use their tools, uh, the information theory tools, to quantify how much information has arrived uh, with this message, uh, these codes that that we we keep sending uh, to, uh, uh, to to the outsider. Now, uh, now it turns out, uh, as I told you, this is not our our idea. Uh, somebody beat us to it. And in fact, uh, fifty five or maybe uh, uh, fifty five years earlier than us. Uh, that's by. Um, Henry Thiel, or, or I should say Henri Thiel of University of Chicago in, uh, that's published uh, in a paper uh, in 1969 in Management Science. Uh, it's called On the Use of Information Theory Concepts uh, uh, in the Analysis of Financial Statements. So the uh, introduction is very short, so I'm actually going to try to read it for you with some emphasis that I, that I added on. Balance sheet and income statements are numerical decompositions of certain total sums, assets, liabilities, sales, costs, and expenses. The behavior of individual items measured as fractions, which is common size, uh, of the corresponding sum is important for analysis of a company's financial position. It will be argued in this article that uh, certain concepts derived from information theory are useful as uh, summarizing this is important descriptive devices of the change in such uh, fractions, as well as the analysis of difference between companies of the same industry. So, so somebody beat us to it uh, many years ago, uh, Henri Theo. Now you may ask who is Henri Theo? Uh, it turns out that we all study him uh, because, um, because Henri Theo is a Dutch um, uh, econometrician uh, who invented two sage Lee squares. So all of us uh, study him. Uh, in the 1950s, uh, along with uh, Zellner, uh, another uh, econometrician, uh, they uh, invented three stage Lee squares in 1957. Um, he wrote a book on economics and information theory. He was the one that introduces information theory into economics. Um, he's, uh, he's, uh, there's, uh, he invented a, a Theos index for um, in, uh, income inequality. Uh, that's using economic uh, uh, information theory concepts. And he wrote one paper in accounting. Um, uh, it, that's the management science paper. Um, okay, so that's our hero worshiping. Right. May I add one more of my heroes? His name is Vickery, and he wrote, I think the paper is like 1973 or something, is accounting and measurement science. Mm, uh, wow, he, that's very good. And he concludes that historical cost accounting is not a measurement science. So if you like, okay. I said, it's paper at some stage. Vickery of the Vickery auction? No, 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 not the Vickery. No, no. Yeah, not the Vickery <laughs> auction. <I think. laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah. Great, great. Um, all right, uh, all right. Um, so that give that, um, that, um, now we, we now, now I have to be. Uh, now I have to stop the world uh, hero worshiping and then uh, start um, introducing some uh, concepts. Um, um, so, um, uh, again, uh, we want to take the dare to move away from information economics, and we want to look for some quantification of information without specifying all the details that Joe Dembski taught us. Um, so we have. We have to depart from information economics, and we, we, we want to come to information theory, which seems to be uh, a very fitting uh, discipline uh, uh, to learn, 
especially if we visualize accounting as coding. Um, and Unreveal had already showed us that there's some promise. Um, and information e theory has been wildly successful uh, in engineering and uh, other sciences, uh, uh, biology, physics, and, and, and so, so, um, uh, so why not, right? Uh, now it's very vast. So what I wanted to do is focus on absolutely what's necessary for uh, for Unreveal and for us. And the, it turns out to be just two simple concepts. And that's the idea of entropy and KL divergence. So I'm going to just define them on the, on the next slide. Um, uh, uh, entropy is defined in this example using discrete random variable X, uh, capital X, that uses an alphabet. Think of it as a range. A computer scientists likes to use alphabet because they, they, they use sometimes uh, letters, not just numbers, as, as a way to code. Um, so X is a discrete random variable on some uh, alphabet with some probability mass function, um, a PX. Uh, entropy is immediately defined. Um, it's simply, it's defined by H on this probability distribution. It's the negative of the, the, the expected value. So it's, if you see sum of all the Xs, PX, the, the, the whatever what's left, it's basically taking expected value. And that's log with basis B. So typically B is two, so it's binary code. So it's two, log two, um, uh, that's why it's called bits. And the log is simply applied to the probability themselves. And because probability are less than one, so the log of them are negative. So Henry, uh, oh, sorry, uh, Klaus Shannon put a negative sign so to make the H function always positive. So this is just a expectation of the logarithm of the probabilities. So the intuition, it's simply this this metric H collapses the distribution function into a summary statistics that measures how much uncertainty are there. So imagine a uh, multivariate uh, 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 multi, uh, 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 variable with equal probability, like a unit, almost like a uniform distribution. That will give you the maximum uh, 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 entropy. If you put uh, 0.99999 on one and then very very minimal on the other, the entropy will be close to zero. So it basically measures how much uncertainties are there. Um, and, and the relative entropy, uh, which is also is called KL divergence, is to uh, take, uh, so the entropy is about a single uh, probability uh, 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 distribution. Uh, the uh, KL divergence is, is about two distributions of the same uh, uh, underlying uh, uh, X, let's say the, um, the range. And, and it's simply, it's very close to the entropy measure, but it's simply uh, the uh, basically expectation of the log, not just the P, uh, but the, 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 um, the ratio of the, of the two distributions, or uh, two alternative distributions of the same uh, random variable. So remarkably, uh, this definition of, uh, of KL divergence is always positive. Uh, it has something to do with Jensen's inequality. But it measures how these two distributions are different. Imagine the extreme uh, is that these two distributions are, 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 are identical. Uh, then this uh, this log is going to be uh, always, uh, for every every x realization, it's going to be 1. And so the log of 1 is going to be 0. So expectation is going to be 0. So KL divergence measures how essentially the distance between two di distributions. It's, uh, um, I'll tell you later, it's actually widely successful in modern machine learning. Uh, there are actually some recent uh, uh, axiomatiz axiomatization by the economists about these two pairs of measure being uh, actually useful in economic uh, decision science. And so the first measure tells you uh, the entropy is about uncertain total uncertainty. And then the second, you can think of it as when you bring a new distribution, how much uncertainty has been resolved, how how how, dis how much distance has, has, uh, has uh, 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 between the two uh, 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 distributions. So I just pause just to make sure uh, that we have any. Uh, Vic has a question. Yeah, just out of curiosity, what happens if uh, there is an event x that has probability zero under p? I yeah, always wondered about that. that. Yes, um, there are um, uh, there, there are theoretical fixes that we we can make because we ran into them in, in let's say in modern machine learning. Uh, almost many many algorithms is is actually minimize the model distribution and empirical distribution uh, and and then uh, uh, minimize choose hyperparameters to minimize the uh, 
KL divergence. When something has zero, you, you, you have to do something. So there are a lot of what's called smoothing techniques. I, think, I, I don't know uh, if you, uh, that, uh, that one can, one can put. Basically, when you have zero events, a lot of times um, they can um, they will put uh, you can uh, you can you can define it separately or you can just put a, a tiny tiny amount of probability on them uh, um, and then make sure you compensate everywhere else so that you don't you don't bias uh, so there are uh, uh, many many uh, ways to both theoretically and empirically fix this uh, 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 issue very good question yeah um, so the recent economic uh, optimization, uh, th this is in, uh, what I'm saying is that these concepts are invading economics. Um, there's recent uh, Franco and Kamenica uh, uh, optimization uh, basically give rise to um, these two, a pair of me uh, uh, measures to measure econo uh, information from a, within the economic framework. Uh, the, the uncertainty is measured by entropy, then a uh, KL divergence is uh, is must be used to measure information uh, that re reduces uncertainty. Okay. Um, um, now Henry Thiel, uh, inspired by these two definitions, um, applied the KL divergence on two pairs of distribution, but one is a prior and the other is posterior, and so the uh, prior is to P and and posterior is Q uh, uh, for some rent, uh, for some underlying uh, uh, variable X. So Henry, Th Henry Theo defines expected information of a message. So whatever the message that causes us to change from the prior to the posterior, uh, Henry Theo uh, defined expected information of that message as essentially KL divergence. If you look at his I measure, uh, which is just exactly the KL divergence, the way Henry Theo uh, uh, interpret uh, the, uh, uh, check on time here, okay, I'm doing well, uh, interpret the 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 expected information on the balance sheet fractions um, is this. He says, basically, what he's going to do is that he's going to take balance sheet frictions uh, uh, fractions as probabilities uh, when we ask the following question. So so that's what Hen uh, Henry Thiel's interpretation of uh, of his uh, of his proposal uh, using this uh, KL divergence is that if one takes a random dollar from a company's asset. Uh, at the end of 1964, uh, that's his data. He has like two years of data. Um, uh, what is the chance that that dollar uh, uh, comes uh, falls under current asset or long-term assets as such? So that's one way to interpret. Another way to interpret uh, the, his, his definition of expected information is that this tells us how far the company or we have traveled from the fractions of last year to the fractions of this year. How much has has changed? There are a lot of things that have changed, like we saw in Silicon Valley. But this measure uh, is a single dimensional measure uh, that tells us how far we've traveled. And again, there's no users here, right? If you notice, Henry Theo simply trend, uh, uh, view this as this is this is the uh, information that's in the message that has changed us our from ourselves from the prior to the posterior. Brett. Yeah, no, no, I mean, in, in general, you know, we use Markov probabilities, right? That the transition probability is independent from year to year. That's very unlikely to be true here, right? No, no, yeah. It, uh, um, that, that's the whole, that's the whole um, process, right? So, so no, oh, sorry. So KO divergence um, does not require any processes about two distribution. It simply says, uh, I can, uh, I, I, it's, it's, it's a measure between, uh, uh, any distributions uh, of the same um, uh, of, of, of that's that's in some sense relevant, right? Um, so yeah, I, uh, it, it does not require any processes that any of these things follow. It simply measures the distance between two distributions. But what I'm asking is, you're taking a long history, right? If I understand that question correct, maybe I misunderstood the question. No, no. This is simply so. In Henry Thiel's work, he's basically thinking about one. Probably uh, one balance sheet uh, against a previous balance sheet, like what we did with uh, a Silicon Valley Bank, right? So in the common size, uh, all the assets add up to uh, fractions add up to one uh, in at the end of this year, and then uh, there is uh, all the uh, um, fractions of, uh, uh, of assets in the last year add up to one, and this KL divergence simply takes that uh, one uh, year difference, so we don't go back. 
uh, any years. We can, but we don't go back many, many years. We just take, take, take two points in time. So when you say this dollar, you're not talking about a specific path of a specific dollar. Yes. Oh, 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 that's the interpretation. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah, I misunderstood your question. So Henry Theo's expect, um, as Henry Theo's uh, um, interpretation uh, uh, of what these fractions mean, right? That that's that, that that's what the, his interpretation is about. He says, okay, uh, I'm taking. Um, uh, how do I? How should I interpret these fractions? Because they are not truly probabilities. Right. right. So his satisfaction for that. Now, at, in 1969, his satisfaction for that was um, what these fractions can be. Uh, th these fractions can be thought of as probabilities if we ask the question, if you take random dollar out of a company's asset, what, who, who does that? I don't know. But that's his thought experiment. Then the fractions tells you what's the likelihood, what's the probability that this dollar will come from a particular line item. That's the way that he satisfied it uh, as a uh, as taking those balance sheet fractions as probabilities, which we know is, they are not probability. I, I understand, but they won't be stable across time, right? I mean, if I if the dollar no. stayed in the first no. year, it's likely to stay in the second year also. That's right. That's right. So exactly. So from one year to the next, right? Uh, if we if you look at Silicon Valley. In the in the second in the second I, I, I think we have 2020 2021 22 for the last uh, 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 later year uh, they're close to be very very stationary right uh, in fact I'm going to give you some examples later on in some uh, kind of interesting exercise yeah yeah exactly um could do some stickiness yes um okay uh, so this is a little bit of Theory work that we did, um, we, we were not satisfied with uh, uh, his um, uh, Henry Thale's um, uh, interpretation. So what we did was we did a we rely on Rennie's uh, uh, proof in 1962 uh, to apply uh, the entropy measure to positive sums uh, um, in, instead of just uh, positive ve uh, vectors that add up to one. So consider uh, any um, vector um, that's um, uh, that uh, the number is positive can be greater than one, uh, but they they need to be positive. Uh, the uh, the the vector can be of size of two, three, or four, um, any size. Um, so uh, the the axiomatization exercise uh, says now if you think about a a sequence of symmetric functions. So what's a symmetric function? Symmetric function is a J uh, function where the if you switch orders. In the x, uh, it returns the same value, so that's why it's symmetric. Uh, so it's some, there's some kind of order invariant property that the, these orders does not matter. But then a sequence of them, which means uh, the j m uh, m equal to two, basically says uh, 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 the input into this function is a vector, is a two by one vector. Uh, but then the next one is three, so three by one, four by one, five by. One. So there's a sequence of them uh, that. Suppose you want this function to satisfy the following three axioms. The first two are normalization. Uh, the first one simply anchors uh, uh, the, uh, 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 the J2. Uh, and then the second one is about continuity. So these are just technical uh, assumptions. These are not really uh, matters. The important one is called grouping. So the grouping relates um, M, uh, the J M minus one to J, J M. So if you look at these, how, this, how, these, how they are connected, um, the j m minus one, it's taking in an input that simply adds the the first two elements of the uh, the j function j m function. But remember, it's symmetric; it's the order invariant. So basically, you can add any pair of numbers. So the, the grouping property requires these two functions, which is part of this sequence. That difference has to be only a function of the things that you're adding. So again, this is another uh, layer of order invariant. Um, so if you if you want the, this j m j m function, which summarizes a vector into a single uh, value, to satisfy these three properties, uh, uh, Rennie uh, in 1962 proved uh, that the only function that satisfies that uh, is uh, is uh, is basically entropy, uh, which is remarkable. That's amazing. Uh, um, so we 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 simply did a slight generalization. So what we're doing is we're simply scaling the total. Uh, uh, the vector by uh, by summing the, the the positive sums and that's our k 
So basically, the summarization function will, will give rise in the generalized version a, a k number and then an entropy measure. Basically, we capture like a balance sheet into basically summarize into two numbers. One is the total asset, which is the k, and then the other is basically the entropy measure. So these two captures uh, the whole vector according to this group uh, that satisfy the grouping property. And, and, and this is the only one that satisfy. Okay, so this is the slight, just a slight generalization that we can, we, we don't, uh, we, we can generalize the, the entropy measures to cases beyond, uh, beyond um, uh, uh, probabilities. All right, so that's a little bit of theory. Most of our work is actually empirical uh, beyond, um, beyond Henry Deal. Now, uh, I want to give you some intuition of why, uh, why this uh, entropy measure uh, is, a, um, is, a, is, in, is, is, uh, is a good summarization measure, because there are alternatives, right? So for example, the one that we are very familiar, if you take any vector, like a data set, right? So it's like, like, a, uh, like um, the balance sheets, um, like it's, it's, it's a vector. A, a simple um, measure is actually sum of squares. So you take the vector and then just uh, take x, uh, x prime. Um, which is basically a, 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 a nonlinear function of the same thing that you want to describe. We simply do it differently using uh, entropy. So if you look at that, I'd say, which is a typical um, summary uh, uh, statistics about the total variation of the data needs to be explained, right? And this is heavily used in standard statistical analysis based on linear models, right? Because, because this is uh, X, uh, X prime is also a summary of what's what's there, what's the variation that's there, right? Now, for our uh, uh, example, uh, for any positive x, the information theory-based entropy measure can be thought of as Jm, uh, which is m denotes the number of elements in the vector, which is simply x uh, log of x, x prime. So it's very close, right? It's x in times x, not x prime, but log of x prime. But we know from theory that uh, x, uh, the, the sum of squares, uh, failed the grouping property, right? So it's less desirable as a, as a measure of, 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 um, of summary uh, uh, from a theoretical standpoint. And that's not surprisingly in modern deep learning uh, methodologies uh, that deals with a lot of nonlinearity, uh, uh, sum of squared error approach has been giving away uh, to minimizing KL divergence, which is the logical uh, 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 distance measure uh, from uh, 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 of entropy using Shannon's entropy ideas. So, um, if if time permits, I'll come back and, and give you illustration of that uh, KL divergence minimization uh, in a in a, a classifier example. But anyway, so this is kind of enough of of, of this of the theory. So so hopefully you let me. Um, uh, apply this uh, idea, Henry Theo's idea, and our slight generalization into um, some empirical constructs. Um, so we, what we, what we do in our uh, in our work is basically extend uh, to take Henry Theo's idea um, and construct his expected information, or what we call accounting entropy, um, as uh, just very simple steps. We extract a dollar amounts of some financial statement line item. Let's say in Silicon Valley Bank, it will be cash, you know, um, um, uh, held to maturity securities, and transform them into a fraction of total, so basically common size. And then for each line item, we're going to define uh, firm I's reported X uh, fraction from quarter Q, and calculate the entropy distance from the previous quarter of the same uh, line item as simply the uh, percentage or the 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 uh, the the line item percentage of the total times log of the ratio of the same uh, ratio divided by the previous ratio. So that's why uh, I think Vic's idea, what if the previous year there's a zero, we need to do something uh, to finesse that, uh, like aggregation or other, other, other ways. Um, so, and then we simply sum them over all of the uh, line, line items on the balance sheet. And so that gave rise to our AE for a Q for quarter for this quarter, uh, for this particular fund. It's a very uh, simple process. It's basically follow follow uh, Henry Theo's idea. Okay, so just be clear. Kalash, I hear. So uh, earlier in the presentation, you had mentioned that you're trying to focus on the information production as opposed to the real activity. Mm -hmm. But obviously, there's going to be some mix of that in in this kind of calculation. Mm -hmm. um, 
I guess the, the main thing I can think of right now is M&A, where if you buy, even if you buy a very similar business, so the underlying economics don't change, the goodwill will make this ratio change a lot. So that should only capture the accounting like I think you're trying to do. But you could also imagine that um, a very different uh, M&A transaction could change the economics too. So is there some kind of, I don't know, standardization that you would try to employ to remove that? Yeah, that's a good idea. I, I don't think we've discussed among ourselves this M&A uh, with with this idea of uh, unrecorded goodwill. So, so your point is that um, the business are actually similar, uh, um, but the um, one comp uh, the the acquiring firm has unrecorded goodwill, and the uh, acquired firm has now recorded goodwill. So that may make this measure um, not sensitive to that fact, right? Um, actually, that that's something I don't think we have anything um, explicitly thought about this. It's actually something that we need to think about, I guess. Sure, yeah, so, and, so, so, and my so. point is it could go both ways. So like mm -hmm. Procter & Gamble buying Gillette, they're very similar businesses, but because of the, the large goodwill you have to book on the balance sheet, it's going mm -hmm. to make this ratio change a lot and therefore it's going to look like there's a lot more information. But it could mm -hmm. also be that Procter & Gamble buys a completely different business that's not similar to the old uh, P&G and then you'd still find a large change in this measure. Mm -hmm. But those are clearly two different transactions. Um, yep. Yeah. Um, yep. Very good. Uh, David? Uh, yeah, I'll kind of follow up on that. In a way, if you think about it from the point of view of somebody having information that they have used to make that acquisition, then the, the change in that number becomes very important because someone of... Uh, somewhere has decided either internally or externally that this is the value that should be placed upon what they have acquired. And so actually that would be actually uh, enriching the information mm -hmm. environment, I think. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. Uh, we need to think more about this. Yeah. It's um, uh, one of the, one of the things uh, that we uh, we've been uh, thinking is, is that this could be simply um yeah no i i don't think I, I, that's actually relevant um yeah so so the fact that this purchase took place uh uh, uh could we be reflected that's your point david right uh, could yes. be reflected in this measure yeah yeah the, versus the count uh, versus the counterfactual right um mm -hmm. all right yeah thanks something to to certainly think, think through Kalash, you have another? Yeah, sorry about this. Uh, uh, one more comment. What happens when you introduce a new line item because of a standards change? So like leases coming onto the balance sheet. Do you, it's a similar to Vic's question from before about the, the zero. Yeah. 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 So there are, uh, there are certainly statistical, um, this is this is well encountered by uh, uh, you know, decades of, uh, by engineers and computer scientists uh, to address this issue. Um, well, I think for for our purposes, because this is a proof of concept, uh, we we try to make this very simple. If I'm if I'm uh, mistaken, uh, if I'm not uh, mistaken, the, the results that you see on the paper, we simply um, aggregate. Uh, we we made a choice on some kind of aggregation level so that we minimize the number of cases where they have zeros. I think that's how we how we approach it this way. Yeah, but there are uh, both empirical and theoretical fixes to do this. Excellent questions. Um, so, so for the purpose of clarity, and what I'm going to show you in this presentation is the we focus on the simplest scope to construct this AE, uh, only the asset size of the balance sheet. But remember, uh, because of the order invariant with all these properties, this measure is actually extremely flexible. Uh, it, it could apply it in and many other scope. Uh, uh, in fact, I will show you a simple example later. Um, so this is just for illustration. So for these for these purposes, uh, we we set the n equal to or uh, the m okay, is equal to eight. There are only eight uh, eight uh, balance sheet items uh, as, as you have seen. So basically, we put a other category uh, to lump everything else. Uh, so basically, um, three short term, three long term, and everything else. So just a proof of concept. Uh, now, um, before I show you the data, uh, I want to recall everyone. Uh, how am I doing on time? Oh, okay. Uh, I need to be, be quick. Um, this is grounded in formal information theory. The measure, uh, information theory, is a unidimensional measure of some multidimensional classification 
certain objects. Um, its literal meaning is actually expected extra bits uh, of uh, basically fit, uh, uh, com uh, uh, com uh, computer codes, bits of information that's in to encode the message uh, in quarter Q if we use the stale information in Q minus one. So that's the extra bit. Um, the expanded meaning for us is it gives you some lower bound that means of total new information that have arrived. Um, and it's an internal measure. That means we do not need to go to who uses this um, and, and we'll use that as a validation check. Uh, but this is the measure is internal. Uh, they focus on immediate um, output from uh, information production. This from, from the whole, all the coding process that we don't see just from the financial statement. Okay, so, so here are some simple examples uh, like, like SVB. Um, so it turns out there's a, some interesting patterns. So, so the vertical axis is simply the total growth rate of the of the um, of the uh, uh, total asset. So that's that's not ours. The horizontal axis is the um, uh, accounting entropy. So we calc I calculated for four years, so five years of data. So it has a circular pattern. Now this is maybe just right. so because it simply says the co the company in 2019 is very kind of uh, low growth not much going on. And then he immediately went out on a, on a binge and then keep going and then come back. So they did basically two rounds of big expansion uh, because the growth rate was 30% and 80% in the next year and then a huge compositional change and then come back again. Uh, now this is, uh, this, so this is circular. Uh, so this is Cisco. It has, it has two circles. Uh, again, vertical axis, growth rate, horizontal axis, a compositional change by AE. Uh, so it has this uh, 2008 to nine go, switching to the Northeast, stay up there and come back uh, uh, 2011, back to 2012, and then go back out again. So Cisco is going through rounds of requisitions and runs of activity changes. So, so that's what this reveals uh, from a, uh, I do anomaly detection. So if you take the same Cisco data, if you look at the liability side and shareholders equity, you can do the same thing, right? It's very flexible. What you see is actually 2000, uh, 2009 is actually the anomaly because over here you see, oh, there's the circular movement on, of, 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 of AE, um, but, uh, but, but the, the real action is actually on the liability and shareholders equity side. And remember, um, 2009 is the, uh, is the outlier and the scale just says that it's a lot, bet, a lot bigger than the asset. See, on the asset side, uh, uh, the horizontal axis only goes to 0.7%. Uh, here it's eight percent, so it's huge, right? So, so it, this this there seems to be some patterns here. Anyway, so this is kind of a fun thing that I show in my class. Um, okay, uh, so now let's let's look at the large sample. Um, okay, let's. Oh, oh, I'm doing good. So uh, what we do is that uh, in, so uh, Henri Henri Thiel only lo look at like five companies over three years because uh, that's it. Um, uh, so what we did was that we simply took um, a large panel um, and, and calculate AE for um, all the quarters, for all the firms, and using our pro proof of concept example. We do two exercises. One is to validate this. So if we claim that this is uh, contains some information, uh, then it ought to correlate, but not completely uh, exactly this uh, exactly this contains exactly the same information from some uh, well-recognized information measures that's external. So we have an internal measure of information. And we hold some of it is captured by the users and the users tells us how they use it and that's that a measure of information and hopefully they are not uh, completely dis, dis, disjoint but not completely overlapping. Uh, right? Uh, so we do, we do some have some healthy overlap. So that's the valid, uh, validation exercise. We use typical information, uh, uh, economic measures like the returns and um, volume. But then, uh, but then after that, we want to do a second exercise. We say how we are going to use this. So we look for a use case. Uh, it turns out to be analyst forecast, but we want to look for settings where uh, this internal measure tells us uh, some, in some sense, the total information that's available for process uh, that may be uh, different from information that's being processed, for example, by, uh, by, uh, by the analyst. So we want a, a scenario where uh, someone like analyst may 
uh, respond to an uh, increase in information, total available inf information to be processed and change some of their observable uh, actions. And we want to apply that as kind of a use case uh, for our measure. Okay. Uh, so again, this is uh, only um, on uh, asset side of a balance sheet, but uh, in unreported data, we also apply this to um, uh, other uh, other uh, the other side of the balance sheet, and then on income statement, other um, on trial balances, for example, uh, are, are yet to be completed. Uh, in hi Pierre, so uh, you hi. mentioned this uh, measure as internal measure a couple times. I um I'm not sure how to interpret it because you also use like the use case using analyst forecast. So how how should I interpret this internal? Who got to have this um, information? Yeah. Very good question. So internal simply means the measure itself does not explicitly, uh, does not uh, uses, um, uh, does not rely on external users, right? We're simply calculating, so you remember how AE is computed is entirely from the output of the financial statement itself. It does not rely on some reaction to it. Now we are, we are applying to a use case as, uh, as a way to demonstrate the usefulness of this measure. Because uh, uh, we, uh, uh, we we hope this is theoretically the right measure to 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 give us some idea of what's contained in common size financial statements, but uh, but we want to um, we want to uh, we want to kind of uh, uh, convince ourselves that this is a, a useful measure, uh, and then uh, one way to think about it is that it correlates with other measures, so that's validation. The other is that we can use the measure to answer some questions that we're interested in. Now, we are not particularly interested in analyst forecast per se in this paper. We simply want to kind of uh, uh, to take it out, out on a spin, like a, a, like a, a example. Uh, so that's why, uh, so analyst forecast is not used in constructing the AE, AE measure. Uh, and analyst forecast is not a specific question we need to, we want to address in this question, uh, in this paper, but we simply want to use it as an example. That's why, that's why we call this a use case uh, for, uh, for, for how this measure could, could potentially be used. If, if we're lucky, we would like this measure, we would like, want to take this measure as a part of many other measures uh, of measures of information to address some interesting questions that we are actually interested in. All right, uh, so uh, let's let's hurry up a little bit. Uh, I have eight minutes. Um, so as I mentioned, um, two tasks. One is um, validation exercise. Um, uh, we use stock returns and trading volume. Uh, so stock returns is very uh, uh, standard. So some kind of uh, market variable on the left-hand side. On the right-hand side, we use uh, AE ranks um, instead of the uh, um, uh, AE themselves. Uh, so these are uh, rank, um, variable. And then we have a bunch of controls. Hopefully that's uh, a standard controls. Um, and we just validate whether or not uh, there's some uh, remaining uh, explanation uh, of uh, 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 that uh, AE rank contains. Um, the uh, the left-hand side variable, I think we use th uh, three categories. One is the short window returns. These are three day. And then a longer window, uh, monthly, I think all the way up to two months. Uh, and then volume is the next one. So you're going to see the familiar um, uh, th these re regressions with uh, various uh, uh, specifications. Um, so I will I will go through them uh, step by step. Hopefully this is not uh, very uh, very uh, complex. It's as simple as it, it, it's a good get. So this is short window. Um, so again, the key uh, the key uh, the, co uh, the the inference we want to make is. Uh, uh, the uh, the first one is univar basically univariate uh, uh, correlate uh, 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 association between uh, the the three day window and this uh, AE rank. So um, a, a new financial statement is uh, appeared. We can calculate the AE. We rank them, uh, and then we look at their uh, the uh, the associated um, three day window uh, returns. The return measures some kind of a processed uh, information external measure. And when ideally it's um, it, 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 it's associated with internal measures of information, and we see they are um, they are all statistically significant, even after we make uh, uh, the controls of size, BM, the the uh, uh, book to market, and all these other standard um, um, uh, controls, and and of course fixed effects in uh, um, uh, specification three and four. 
Um, so uh, uh, the commonly uh, used financial statement item variables and other indicators of information uh, do not fully explain the association between uh, our measure and the commonly accepted external measures of information. So we're gonna do, we're gonna do this exercise two more times. Um, uh, one is, uh, many questions, okay. One is um, these are longer window because sometimes we 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 see uh, we see higher uh, uh, total information that's available that's generated by let's say common size balance sheets may take some time to be processed so we use a uh, longer windows um, uh, this relationship uh, between uh, uh, AE rank uh, 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 entropy rank and absolute changes oh so by the way the measures are um, the external measures are absolute measures because uh, AE rank is uh, directionless, right? It only tells you um, uh, total information, uh, not uh, good news, bad news. So that's why the external measure on returns is also um, absolute uh, uh, changes in, in, in prices. Um, now volume, uh, which will be another one, um, uh, is directionless, right? It's just uh, high or uh, low volume. Uh, they are all positive. So that's why um, uh, it, it's also natural to compare them. Uh, so interestingly, um, in the if you look at uh, the uh, column two and and three, the two sets two specifications, the, our AE rank uh, um, uh, uh, coefficient usually declines uh, because it overlaps with some <laughs> other control, uh, information from control variable. In this case, actually, uh, AE rank um, uh, association with volume cannot be explained uh, by a lot of the other control variables. That's kind of intriguing uh, for, for, for for us. Um, Finally, I just had enough time perhaps to share with you the, the use case. Um, so the use case idea is this. I, I want to take take uh, take a minute to um, to reintroduce. So we want to, uh, uh, assuming that our measure contains some uh, uh, measure of information that's independent of its how it's used. That means if someone if some uh, someone has used this information versus have chose to ignore this information, that choice does not affect this measure itself, right? Because it's it's internal. It's it's purely based on financial statements. So we we thought, uh, at least the way I think about this, is that this is best used uh, in cases where you want to make a distinction between total information that's available to be processed from information that's uh, that's actually being processed. So we want something to uh, to react to this uh, 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 to, to this uh, to this to an information measure that's distinct from how it's being processed. Oh uh, Brad. Yeah sorry just a quick point on this. This is where I think there is a real issue because we can never see how information is actually being viewed by the people. We cannot view their beliefs. We can only see how they use it. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that's why I think that, you know, you have to be a little bit careful. All we can see is how they use the information. Mm -hmm. So from that, we have to figure out how their beliefs change. So that's the thing, you know, that's why the decision maker is kind of central in this to some extent. Yeah, I, I, I follow. So let, let me think. So, so we have, in the paper, we do not have a model yet, but we have this following reasoning. Suppose, uh, so we think of a kind of um, a attention allocation kind of decision. So I'm an analyst. I want to allocate my limited resources to pay attention to uh, this firm, pay attention to that firm. Uh, the, 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 the initial step that we, we thought this, the, this, you know, before I dig in and, and, and change my belief based on information, I need to decide how much attention I need to pay for, uh, I need to pay for this for this particular instance versus another. So we thought that our measure may give, it's a summary measure, right? So it gives you a sense of how much is there. So suppose I'm following two firms and one firm just released a common size financial statement that's almost exactly like la last year. Another firm that has a huge difference like S uh, SVP. Uh, SVB. So our idea is that that analyst, without digging in yet, use this summary statistics. Maybe in some other metrics, they don't. They have not seen uh, entropy and all that, but they have some other idea. 
about uh, total information that's available, decided to maybe pay more attention, right? If you write a simple model about that, you can say more attention to SB, uh, S, SBB versus another firm. So, and that, after that, uh, after they learn details and that, then they, they change their beliefs and, and make some uh, 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 recommendation. So I think I think we are on the same page on that. It's simply we 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 would like to uh, slow the process to use this uh, uh, kind of idea of total information available to be processed, not fully be processed. Uh, as the intermediate step between information measure, internal information measure, and all the way to external reaction. Uh, yeah, it's not, it's not it, there's no explicit model here, but this is actually what's behind our empirical exercise. I hope that's helpful. And we can talk later about that. So so this is, this is what we did. We look at a summary measure of analyst activity, which is uh, the basically total unique number of analyst forecast period, forecast combinations. So if you have two analysts that's forecasting over one year or two year, and with uh, during a 90 day window with three or five revisions, that's the total combination, right? Um, and we measure, we want to think about for this firm in this 90 day period, uh, uh, this APC measure uh, uh, tells us how analyst is paying attention to firm I for this quarter over this 90 day period. So, and then we have some decomposition. I don't have time to do that. I'm already out of time. Um, so uh, the sh short summary is that um, uh, in, in response to the AE rank, analyst seems to adjust uh, the total uh, uh, number of forecasts. They seem to pay more attention. And in particular, it, it's not that they ch choose not to follow a firm that has a lot of uh, uh, low or high Sorry. Uh, 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 activity. Sorry, Pierre. But, uh, yeah, maybe uh, maybe yeah. we're on time. So maybe yeah. if people still have questions, they we can. Yeah, let's talk about that later. Yeah. yeah. So so, but I want to I want to uh, show the uh, uh, um, uh, announcements. Thank you all for a great season. Uh, so I'm I'm, uh, I'm I encourage all of us to uh, submit for the uh, next season in the fall. Uh, and uh, just email um, Aeon, and which has been great help. Thank you so much. Um, I, sorry, I, I ran out of time, but I'm happy to stay stay behind if you have any questions about the last use case or the whole um, idea. Thanks.